Okay, so um, my name is Adam Simons. I'm currently working on a project of, uh, I guess you call it film fan art. Um, not exactly posters, uh, but uh, you know, illustrations. Films in my personal canon. So a lot of 90s stuff, a lot of stuff from Blockbuster Video, and um, this one from uh, the Des Mangan cult movie uh, program block on SBS. Um, and this is uh, an out of uh, Fudo, the next generation, um, by Takeshi Mike. Uh, this is, um, I guess, his breakout. Uh, and speaking from the perspective of the, I mean, the West, this breakout was Audition. But uh, shortly before Audition, uh, a, one of his uh, director video works was released in cinemas. That's uh, Fudo. Um, managed to make a little bit of a splash on uh, the film festival circuit. The rest of history. Um, Fudo's uh, Lurid. Lurid is probably the best word to describe Fudo. Uh, Fudo swears revenge on his father and the entirety of uh, the Yakuza organization that um, took his dear brother from him. Um, so, yeah, that's, uh, it's a lot of fun, um, provided you're into that sort of thing. Uh, yeah. For, for this illustration, um, I had in mind not so much movie posters, but I uh, wanted to do something like more like a magazine spread, like it would be a professional shoot for for the film with the actor on the soundstage. Um, I'd also been looking at these um, book illustrations uh, by Frederick Pinter, who was just a, a master. Um, the white space is uh, part of the inspiration. Um, I had in mind um, either the, a gate, so this would be the, the gate from the dope temple where the, uh, the elders of the gang reside. Um, you don't really see this view of the gate, but uh, I think it works. Um, so this is more of like a front-on with a, a side panel almost from a, a record sleeve. This idea is more of a street scene with a vending machine and um, this is where the idea of the text in the white space comes in. Um, it's like stretching behind. Uh, in the end I wanted to sort of keep the background more related to the film. Though I think this would have worked. Um, I had an idea for the um, uh, vending machine, um, this is a crossing, this is pretty directly from Pinter, um, this one here, uh, also had in mind maybe uh, an underpass, um, and then I started sort of uh, work my way through variations, um, even thought of uh, maybe abstracting the temple gate a bit more and having um, uh, a bell uh, based on one I, I saw uh, during my holiday um, and maybe even having a more extreme angle. Um, this, I mean, part of the consideration is that the, the intended format, um, well, the format that's most likely going to be seen in is, is on a phone screen, uh, in the screen. Um, so, Having the figure so small is probably not ideal, but I like it a lot. So I guess, uh, I guess I have to balance that. I, th I think the, um, the the big red text sort of uh, does catch your attention um, in a way that maybe uh, having a small figure maybe reduces, uh, maybe it balances. But you know, you gotta, you gotta do what you think is cool at the end of the day. So yeah, uh, first I worked on the model for the gate. Um, it's not uh, especially uh, 
my inspirations in terms of what I'm doing with 3D, um, Vaughn Ling, also known as Heavy Poly, uh, is a big inspiration. Um, he worked on the Love and Love, Sex and Robots shorts and uh, some early previews work for Spider Verse. You know, big graphic shapes is really um, he's almost painting with 3D. Um, Azusa, you get the extra numbers she adds to her username, but Azusa is another artist um, that I really admire for how she's using 3D. Um, and so, yeah, I was big graphic shapes and then adding in layers of detail with other graphic textures. Uh, I was quite happy with how the, uh, the wood texture took, turned out. Oh, we'll get there in just a second. Um, this from this drawing from uh, Pinterest uh, was what I based most of it on, with um, extra details coming in maybe a bit late. Uh, if I'd found this reference earlier, I probably would have uh, used this more, but there you go. Yeah. Um, tried a few things with the, the stonework, but I was, wasn't quite happy with it. It worked well for the um, uh, wall stones to uh, use to placements and then decimate it down at bevels. But I couldn't get it working for the um, other sort of landing. Uh, this in fact is a cell fracture thing, which is fine. I wasn't quite happy with the shapes on the front. Uh, eventually I just used a um, displacement map from Polyhaven, uh, which works alright. I, I crunched the values a little bit. Um, I took a second pass at the roof. Uh, it's pretty angular to begin with. Um, and then eventually I added in some more curved um, tiles and things. But yeah. Um, the wood texture is really uh, made in two ways. It's uh, a Voronoi um, of the right size, but where are we? Um, Right, this scale, this Voronoi is scaled by this noise texture. Um, oh, I've got my hands occupied, but um, if you just have to take my word for it, that the uh, the noise texture um, is what gives uh, the Voronoi um, these wood patterns, um, these swirls, uh, which uh, turns out pretty nice. Especially if you uh, have the um, it uh, an object, it sort of uh, stretches over everything nicely. The uh, bump grain is another noise texture that's uh, scaled on X, so it's uh, lines. Yeah, so it worked pretty well. Um, the painting, um, positives and negatives, I suppose uh, it's as good or better than um, what I've been doing lately, uh, which is as, as much as you can hope for, I guess. Um, probably got to lean heavily, more heavily on uh, Rich Ikigami. I, I wanted, I guess, a, a boyish feel it maybe a little ambiguous it's like it's not quite sinister enough not quite soft enough but you know it is fine maybe this earlier drawing is probably better uh, but it got you know painted over of course um, yeah so after the drawing, um, I went straight into colour. 
I put the eyes in first as a little bit of a technique from a uh, search brought. Having those those eyes in quite cleanly um, makes it a little bit less stressful to like uh, block in the um, the planes of the head um, with a bit of softness and looseness. If uh, you got something solid in there. Um, Looking in colour here, but still fairly monochromatic uh, to reduce the uh, complexity a bit. I'm not sure exactly. I guess I need to um, have an additional pass where I really hit the details and uh, the clean edges, um, especially lower on the figure. So it gets a bit ambiguous, a bit soft. I didn't. Uh, go to the effort of finding proper reference for the shoes, so they're pretty um, loose. But the scale of it in the, in the composition, I think it's fine. Um, but yeah. Uh, yeah, I guess it worked. It worked overall. Um, and, uh, you know, better to be learning through through doing work rather than endless studies. Um, nothing wrong with studies, loves doing studies, but uh, and there's, there's, there's things you only think about when you're trying to do original work that, you, that I just don't think about when I'm doing studies. And um, yeah, you need experience with solving those problems. Yeah. Yeah, um, the costume, um, I can't remember clearly when he wears this white coat. He maybe wears it towards the end of the film, but it uh, works well. Um, it's a sort of a, a dark on light on dark cycle of shapes. Um, I changed the position uh, of the figure in the composition. This is sort of just to get a, the, a feel. Uh, I then uh, uh, placed it in um, the scene uh, as a, um, uh, a plane um, with an alpha. I find it here somewhere. as well as from before that. Do, do, do. Yeah, this was short. Yeah. So just uh, images as planes. Um, in order to get a clean uh, render, I had to hide the landing uh, for one uh, render pass so that um, I could place them back over the top in Photoshop and uh, correct that. It's one of the disadvantages of having um, this process of uh, a plane in 3D is um, if you draw the figure in perspective, when you place it in 3D perspective, the feet won't necessarily um, line up. Mm, I haven't quite thought of how to fix that. Maybe actually having 3D shoes might be the and so the, that could get a little weird. Well, we'll see. Well, yeah, um, compositing was fairly simple. Uh, color correction, obviously. Um, I had uh, a mist pass from Blender that I used to uh, a lens blur in Photoshop. Um, I also did a little bit of lens distortion having it's a little bit of tension if not all the um, lines are parallel just uh, a little something yeah I think as far as the series is going um, this has worked pretty well um, decent result good concept um, definitely gonna sort of 
probably come back to this soundstage magazine spread concept again um, and see where I can take it. But yeah, uh, that's my project vlog for this week, or this fortnight I should say, I'm doing this fortnight at the moment. Um, hopefully these will get better along with the, uh, the paintings. Well, fingers crossed. <laughs>